can't wait to plug this one in and see how it sounds. Well, maybe not. Uh-oh. Welcome back, troglodytes, to the unboxing vlog. Let's just get to it. No long intros this time. So, we got a small package here. Usually means it's some sort of a pickup. The bad thing with me buying pickups is I never seem to actually have time to list these things. As you can see, the RD Artist stuff still sitting over there from a couple of weeks ago. Let's go ahead and see what's in these guys. We got patent number 2737842. This was used from like 1975-ish through all the way through until about 1990 or so. I'm not really sure what this pickup is. So when I bought these, I thought they were the 490 series from the early 90s before they switched the base plates to the one that says Gibson USA. But now these lead wires Maybe it's just because they're stripped down so far that it's looking a bit goofy. Future Trogly talking here now. These lead wires were throwing me for such a loop, almost to the point where I thought these might actually be counterfeit pickups and I was scammed. But editing this, it finally came to me. These came from a Les Paul Custom Light or an SG Elite from the late 80s. So the base plate makes sense, the wiring makes sense due to the fact that those were stock coil splitting pickups. So these actually ended up being much more rare and valuable than I thought they initially were as an early 490 series. Awesome. Here's another unboxing from good old Sweetwater. Now, I hate talking bad about these guys, but I mean, this pack job. That's unacceptable. I don't know who sent this out, but I would never send a guitar out that flopped around that badly. And usually their pack jobs are good, so I think something slipped through the cracks on this one. Let's just hope they didn't forget my candy. Uh-oh, it's not looking good. <laughs> I don't, oh, there it is. Oh, wow. I've never seen them this full. Do you see this? Usually there's like six pieces. So unfortunately I didn't get any of my favorite Laffy Taffies, but at least we got some Bitto Honeys, the Atomic Fireball Challenges and Tootsie Rolls. That's jam packed. Huh. So they, they did their normal packing job. So it just looks like it's Gibson substandard packaging in here. All right, so it looks like the Original box got chewed up there somehow. Okay, see, there, there's our issue. There's just not enough padding in here. And it probably came from the factory like that. So, I mean, is it really Sweetwater's fault? No, but I feel like you need more packing in there than just this thrown in there. I mean, here's how you could use that to make it actually useful. Wrap it around the top and then put this on top of that. So you've got protection on all four sides. And then it's also protecting the top of the headstock. Now watch. Much less movement, no flopping. Do, 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 do. All right, enough complaining. I hate it when it comes to this. This is supposed to be happy new guitar day. I think this pretty well gives it away, right? Gibson with the heart, Joan Jett. So this is the new Joan Jett Signature Melody Maker. I'm sorry, not Melody Maker. <laughs> I'm just so used to saying that with her name. This is her 336. So essentially it's a Les Paul sized like 335. So the story behind these is Joan likes the witch hat knobs, but she needs this one for speed. But she had Gibson use this special speed knob that I learned later after doing the review that Dimebag Daryl used on his Dean and Washburn guitars. So with the whole situation of Dean versus Gibson, Gibson versus Dean, that kind of made this model a little bit funny. 
We've got a really rare 1 in 50 Fender today. Don't worry about what it says on the box. This is totally a Fender. Ah, uh, this was just released earlier this week, and I thought it was the most beautiful thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is the Fender Batacaster. It is a collaboration between Fender and one of the lead makers of baseball bats in the world, Louisville Slugger. Wow. <laughs> Holding this in my hands. It looks like I got 43 of 50. Seeing as I was the fourth person to order my bats, I'm very disappointed that I didn't get an early serial number. And look, it's, it's all off center. I'm not really thrilled with that. Guess I should check what other number I got. I was crazy enough. I was scared these things were going to sell out. So I bought two of them. Why? I don't know. Yeah, this one's 25 of 50. Now our next one here, I think you guys are going to be happy because a lot of people have asked me to review this body style for a while. And it's not my first one that I've owned. But it is definitely the first one I'm going to review. Looks like I get a little special thing with my name and strap and stuff. We'll open that last. Alright, so if you know anything about modern day Gibson cases, this yellow lining right here, it's very indicative of a very recent guitar. The Lizzie Hale Dark from 2018 that I reviewed had a similar case, so that's kind of what they're doing. I think I personally like the white better. I don't know why they choose yellow, but they do. Let's see what's in here. <laughs> the Gibson RD. People have been wanting me to review this for a long time. I have an RD artist, I think it's a 77, but it's down at somebody who claimed to be a luthier. I'm not sure if I'll ever see those guitars again, but he has an RD artist and an RD standard that somebody just chopped the fin off of. So maybe one day we will get those guitars into review, but until that day, this will probably be the only RD on the channel for now. So they reissued these things, I think, what is this, 2018 model? Yep, in like a limited run that had the fancy Gibson logo on them. Right now is the best time to buy one of these because they're still relatively inexpensive because people who have had them, the, the newness is wearing off. I see a lot of people have been ripping these Gibson gem pickups out. But I think what would be fun is I have RD artists like original electronics sitting over here in this box. Now, it would require extensive routing of the entire guitar, but wouldn't it be fun just to throw those in here? But this mahogany body is just beautiful. Can't wait to plug this one in and see how it sounds. Uh-oh. Well, maybe not. Unfortunately, it looks like the fretboard is lifting. I'm not sure if that is a uh, damage from shipping or if it was a quality control issue, but unfortunately I am going to have to bring that up. Mm. Maybe we won't get a review on this guitar after all. That's a little bit of a shame. We'll go ahead and open up their care package anyways. They gave us a pretty nice strap right there. Let's see what the note says. They definitely personalized this purchase, even though it's for my YouTube channel. So yeah, that's nice. Thank you, man. Hopefully insurance or whatever this is won't be too bad. Next, Glary sent me another guitar. I think this is a new body style. I'm not sure. Maybe I just missed it on their website. But let's go ahead and see what's inside. I've pretty well 
covered mostly everything they've done, but I thought this one was different enough. Why not check it out? Let's take a look-see. All right, so a pure white look. This actually looks pretty good with this dark board, but the white finish really shows you, you know, that micro film of dust and stuff that's always on these things. And for our first one to box up here, I'm actually really sad to see this go, the Somnium guitar. If you missed the video for this one, go check it out because I'm doing a riff contest to win one of these things. Maybe I need to enter and pick myself to win. No, I'm not actually gonna do that. But as a guy who sells pickups, man, this thing is an invaluable tool. And I could see how it could be very useful for somebody who just likes to change tones all the time. I mean, it really is that easy just to swap out pickups. I mean, sure, it was a paid sponsored video, but I had a great time with it. I'm really excited to see what might come out of this company in the future and hopefully a cheaper import model might become available because I would love every single pickup that I sell that I can just, you know, easily wire them in, demo the tones really briefly in a short video so people know what to expect and that they know the pickups work. So let's go ahead and get this one ready for shipment. And here's our next one to box up here. I guess I have most of the latches undone already. I'm so happy I tried this guitar out. I've never really been too into these, but now that I've had one, I get them. They might not be for everybody, but I really dug the tones. And I never realized that these were significantly different from the ESLPs or that it was made at Gibson USA instead of the Memphis version. But you know, now that I've had a taste of this one, I do want to try the Memphis version. So I think I'll try to see if I can hunt one of those down because it seems significantly different to this one. But the new owner of this guitar, they saw the video and they just went to reverb. They just straight out bought it. So thank you for that. And I know you're going to enjoy this guitar. So video marketing, I guess it works. Even though that's not my primary intentions anymore. I mean, when I first started this channel, that's all it was about was selling the guitar. Now I just want to document like one of every single model and yeah, the marketing just happens to help sometimes, right? We've got one more to pack. This is the last 2019 model that I bought to review. It took the longest to sell out of them, but I mean, it, it made sense. I had a feeling it would take longer too, because you know, it's not your traditional Les Paul, but they're still kind of cool. A fun story behind this one is uh, my local buddy actually brought this one home overnight to try it out. Uh, he didn't end up liking the neck profile on it. He doesn't like the asymmetrical neck. But he liked everything else about this one, so I think he just moved on to something else. But the Pelham blue color, I mean, it kind of grew on me. And the neck heel joint, I mean, it's not perfect. It's not the same as an all-access heel joint, but, you know, it's better than what you normally have on a Les Paul. And the return of Ebony, that's pretty cool. So I think, I don't know if this will ever become a collectible guitar, but it's, but it's certainly a nice playable one. All right, thank you for tuning into this boxing and unboxing vlog. Don't forget to get your entries in for the Somnium Guitar Contest. That ends next weekend. And let me know in the comments section, would you rather see me react to the entries or just make a compilation of them? We'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.